So I'm taking my, um, my masking fluid and um, I'm thinking my sort of, not exactly gonna have a big sun, but it may turn into a sun, something around this sort of area. And then the steam kind of coming and pluming sort of up and away this way. So first thing I'm gonna do is just dip my finger into the masking and I want it around, starting around this area here. So I'm just gonna start tapping the um, masking fluid on, um, just with my finger. Just roughly in the um, way that I want the, oops, want the steam to be sort of pluming up. I don't want this too solid a, a shape. So what I will do is I'll start to flick into this in a bit. This is just for the main body of the, of the steam. So it's kind of coming up in this direction. Might even use a bit of rag now, just to get a bit of vari variation in the marks. Just get this ragged on, so that's quite a nice broken mark. I'm gonna leave some holes in this as well, because obviously I want, I do want um, some of that background wash to kind of percolate through this shape. I don't want it to be totally solid. So it's sort of drifting this, this steam across the ground. So there's another big section of plumage up there. So obviously wherever you want it to be completely white, you must make sure there's no holes in the um in the masking but if you want some of the background to show through then um you leave some holes in it so i'm just going to take that right out the right out of the picture just a little bit higher there go back to my finger again just to finish off some slightly denser areas of the um, the steam. Okay, that'll probably do. That'll probably do that. And then I'm going to take a stick of brush, um, like a a um, a hog brush, so that I can actually flick. Some of this masking on as well. Just to add to the add to the effect. So he's not some masking here, unfortunately. <laughs> and then maybe a little bit of low lying moisture. Some you know some steam coming kind of coming off of other areas of water, so I just build a little bit of that up here and there. A little bit up there. Perhaps a touch more in, in the steam body. Okay, just stand back, just have a look, see how that's looking. Perhaps a bit more in the foreground. In the foreground, maybe some slightly bigger. So I'm just tapping my finger <coughs> to get the masking to come off. So as opposed to spraying it, this is more of a tapping method. And then you get bigger, bigger um, deposits of the, the masking fluid as opposed to very, very fine little bits of spray. Just a bit more in here, I think. Okay, that's probably enough. Right, let's wash that brush out. Put away the mask in now. Now, needless to say, if you are doing this, before you put your wash in. Yeah. Are yeah. you going to put the sun in, are you? We're going to have some sort of sun effect, yes. Will you be using the masking for that, though? 
No. No, I'm not going to mask the sun out, no. My sun's going to be a bit more orangey red, I think. I'm not going to go for a very, very bright white sun. Okay. So I'm just going to give that a quick, uh, you shouldn't really do this because it might not come off so well, but just because of time, I'm just going to dry it very quickly. Right, so while that's, I don't want to dry it completely because it will kind of um, go a bit too stiff. So whilst that's drying, I'm going to mix up some colours. So I'll talk you through the colours I'm going to use. <clears throat> so as I said, it's going to be a big, a big wet and wet wash. So the colours I'm putting out first of all will be um, like an orangey red, a yellow. So this is quite a golden -y yellow. Uh, I'm not sure what the name of it is. It's well, golden deep. So anything that's sort of orangey, yellowy kind of colour. So you put orange and yellow together if you want to, to give you a lighter orange yellow, or a bit of red and yellow together. That would probably be working fine. <clears throat> I'm going to use a little bit of cadmium, um, cadmium red light. So we'll have some of that as well. Uh, I'm also going to use some uh, cerulean blue and possibly uh, a little bit of ultramarine in it. I'm not entirely sure yet, but maybe those two mixed together. So that'll be mainly the, 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 the kind of the sky. Down the bottom, I'm gonna use um, some black, this black here, and I'm gonna probably put some, um, some like browns and other colors into that just to break up the, um, the foreground area. So those will roughly be the colours that I'm going to use um, before I take the steam off and then into the steam we'll be putting goldeny colours and purples and blues and things like that. Oh. Okay, so let's just see how this is doing. Take a big brush um, and then I'm just going to wet absolutely everything. So let me just get my reference back up. So all of this is going to get a nice coating of water. Clean water preferably. So again, I'll work, I'm not, I haven't actually stretched this paper, but I've stuck it down with framing tape. I should really have stretched it because it's bottom food. Um, but uh, hopefully it will be okay. For this exercise. So plenty of water all over. It's going to come all the way to the bottom. Sorry, Sorry? We're yeah. going to be, I'm going to be quite behind because the masking fluid's taking ages to dry. Okay. Um, I mean as I said you can give it a little blast with a hairdryer just to start the drying process off but I wouldn't dry it too heavily with a hairdryer. Okay. Uh, because it's um, it can sometimes not come off if you over dry it. All right. Okay, but this is just going to be a wet and wet wash, so you can just watch this bit and then you can you can always have a go once yours is dry. Okay. Right, so plenty plenty of water all over. Just gonna see if that's all wet enough. Okay, I'm just leveling the the board out a touch now so that uh, when I do start to put the paint on, it doesn't just rush right down to the bottom of the painting. Okay, okay. So the first color I'm gonna use will be um, my um, yellowy orangey color. But slightly two variants of this, one is more yellow than the other one. So I'm gonna use the more yellow one first load the brush up really well 
And then I'm just going to start to bring this onto the painting. Some of that through, through there. Clean my brush off. Go into the more yellow colour now. This is more of an orangey, slightly more orangey yellow. Bring some of that into the steam. Okay, now before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip it. So I'm tipping it now the opposite way so that colour starts to run up towards the top of the painting. And sort of tipping it, not just straight, I'm kind of tilting it to the side, tilt it to the other side. So it sort of disperses the colour fairly evenly. <clears throat> just let that run right to the top. Keep it going. Okay, now the next part of this before I start to think about putting any other colours on, is I'm going to take my spray bottle. So up here where the yellow is going up into the whiter area, and I'm going to start to spray that out. So you should start to see it getting lighter. So I'm not spraying into the main body of where that colour was, just this top section is the only bit that I'm spraying just to wash it out. And then a piece of tissue. Just mop that up. So rather than um, uh, run a kind of a brush through this to mop it up, I think washing it out sometimes is a bit more effective. I find anyway. So let's just tilt that over this way a little bit. Okay. And then run that over towards where my steam is. Just bring that down into that little section where the steam is there. Okay, now I'm going to lay it back down, bring some, I'm going to put a bit of red in there now. Now needless to say the colour that you put on needs to be reasonably thick because we're going back into a wet area now. So I want the reds to sort of come through this lower area of the, of the, um, the wash. Just a bit of red up there as well. Bit of angle to it, and again, just tilt that just to start to get those colours to mix. Watch that doesn't run too far. <clears throat> is that masking fluid you have on there, Stu? Yeah, sorry, Kate, did you miss the be beginning bit, did you? It's okay, yeah. yeah so, are you starting a bit earlier these days? Are you starting quarter past? Uh, no, so Friday's 10. All oh, right, okay. That's I thought okay. it was 10.30. <laughs> all right, that's all right. Um, so all I did at the beginning here is I just tapped on a load of masking fluid. Yeah. All, all of this, this section here has got masking in it. Uh -huh. And some at the bottom down here just flicked on. Okay. And then I've wet the whole thing. So it's nice and wet. And then obviously we just start to do this wet and wet wash. Yeah, okay. Um, obviously of this sort of sky type colours. Um, the reference I'm looking at is just the sunsetty one. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep, cool. So let's just block that off a little bit. It's a bit strong there. What red did you use, sir? Uh, this one's just cadmium red light. 
right. who, um, on top of uh, just these orangey yellow colors that I've put on. Okay, so let's put that back, back down. I was considering actually putting a bit of blue. I think we could have a little bit of blue up just in that corner. Not too much. I just want a tiny bit. So I'm going to take a bit of cerulean blue. And I put the blue on last because the blue is the colour that will muddy up all the other colours quicker than anything. So I just want a tiny bit of this up in this corner. And I'm going to pre respray that. That bit of paper's got a bit dry. So I'm just going to tickle a bit of this up here and I'm going to leave a gap. I don't want it to come too, too far down into those yellows because I want to leave it to creep because it will just go green. Let's just give that a little spray. You see it's creeping already into that area. So let's just tease that down a bit more. Not too much, just a tiny bit. And again, I'm just gonna tip that. <clears throat> just to get all those colors to sort of mix in a slightly more pleasing way rather than just being too streaky. <clears throat> okay. Which is a Daniel Smith black by the way. Um, and into that I'm going to put some um, English red um, Burnt sienna. We'll kind of mix those two together. Again, pretty strong. And then starting from my um, the plume area, I'm going to almost just bring this really dark area up to where the plume is coming out of the ground. A bit more dark coming all the way across. And then we're gonna have maybe some puddles back here somewhere. There is a mountain actually running, or some sort of land running through the background there, but I might put that in at the end, or afterwards, I should say. Um, and I want to just get a little bit in the foreground there. A bit more black. Lid back on it. The more black and more of the the browns mixed together, and then I'm just going to bring a few of these land sort of masses, shapes, whatever they are. I don't even know what they are. Bits of sand or some sort of outcrop, anyway, whatever they are. I quite like the way that's bleeding through there. It's quite nice. Let's leave that. Bring that a bit stronger there. Perhaps a bit stronger. A bit of blue in the, the browns. Just on this one, just to darken up a bit more. Okay, enough fiddling. So I'm just going to wash my brushes out and get some clean water while that's still thinking about whatever it's doing. I'm just going to level it out as well so it doesn't run too quickly. It's got a little bit of um, a tiny bit of tilt, maybe two or three degrees, five degrees maximum, so it doesn't run too quickly. So it's coming this way but not too steeply. Okay so hold fire, I'm just going to get some clean water and then we'll carry on. Ha ha ha, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> You've got your mic on. <laughs> Have I? That's me. I can see Stuart's painting going wrong, you see. I know, I can hear you laughing. <laughs> it was happening to me and now it's happening to him. I'm really pleased. <laughs> you didn't say you don't put too much water on. What's that, Jay? <laughs> well, you look at your painting. You, I've done exactly the same as you because you're putting too much water on. What bit are you talking about? Well, look at your painting. Look, where the, where the oranges run right into the black. Yeah? Yeah, but I wanted that. I left it. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I could have painted over that, but I wanted it. I quite like the way it's bleeding into there. I mean, if you really want to, you could just block that off and you could have run more dark over the top of it. Yeah. It would have been yeah. thicker paint, which would have stopped that from running down here. But I quite like the, um, I quite like the linking of the two colours. Because eventually I could cover that up and then this could then be a reflection in the water, you see. Yeah. yeah. If I wanted to. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think we'll leave, we'll leave that bit. I've still got paint in it. Just block that off. So with this water, what you're going to do is take a line of moisture through the bottom edge of where you want your land mass to be. Okay, so we're just going to put a line of moisture, so water. So I'm just running this along over all this masking fluid, over to the right hand side of the picture. So we just make it nice and moist all the way through, just as a, a line, as a line. Slightly larger than the area uh, that we're gonna leave just as moisture. So make it a bit wider. So mine's about, I don't know, about an inch wide in width. And then you take your color, so for this, I'm going to use the black again, but into the black, I will put some, um, put a bit of ultra, uh, cerulean blue into those blacky colors and a tiny bit of red as well. Okay. And then I'm going to then use this color to map out where the hill line is going to come or the land mass so the bottom edge of the brush is in the moisture the top edge of the brush is in dry okay and then i'm going to tilt the board down a bit more a bit more of that color just make it a bit darker at the top that's better and then the bottom edge of it, if you can see, will just bleed into the wet area. Just go a little bit redder on this right hand side. So again, we've got a bit more land. Just undulate that a little bit. It kind of comes down and then through. Might even take a little bit more of the ready orange. Well, that's a bit red. Maybe not make that quite so red. And put a bit of that into this as well. Just a few, in, a little bit in a few places. Just let that bleed down. Okay, that's fine. Now the bottom edge of that area that we put the moisture, we need to just take care of that so we don't end up with a line all the way across. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my brush, knock out all the paint and the most of the moisture and just run that along that bottom edge and you'll see it'll just soak up all of that paint and leave me with a lovely soft edge. 
like so. And that's the hills in. So I'll give you a minute or so just to have a go at that if you do. Take a look. And then we'll get the masking fluid off. Water up here, a bit of water up into these areas. Okay, so I'm going to take some, um, I think we're going to go slightly bluey purple because my sky is quite yellow. Uh, bluey purple type of color will work hopefully quite nicely. It's just finish off wetting those few bits. So let's mix up the colour I want. I'm just going to clean out my palette a little bit, it's filthy. I'm going to take a purple colour, I have a ready-made purple here which is a bit too purple, it's almost like a, um, a cobalt violet type colour. So to knock that down a bit, I'm going to put in, let's go with, let's try a bit of yellow and see what that does. There you go. A bit of yellow is going to brown it slightly. Let's try this first. So a bit of, a bit of purple and yellow together. Re-wet that, it's got a bit dry already. And I'm going to start at the top of my, up the top here, and just let this colour sort of percolate down into this moisture. Might come a bit bluer actually. A bit more cerulean in there. So this is almost like painting clouds in a way. Um, but we're just trying to keep it all nice and soft. So, coming all the way down out of the picture over there. Now, I don't want to obliterate all of the white, but a good proportion of it needs to go because the sky behind needs to be the lighter element of this particular scene. Let's just soften some of that off. I'm just watching the edges as I go that I don't get too crisp an edge on any of these washes. Because again, a crisp edge will really make it start to seem a bit too, too solid. So I'm just softening off as I kind of go. So let's soften off down through here. So I'm just pushing, kind of pushing the paint around a teeny bit. This edge here is a bit too crisp, so let's just work that out. Keep that soft. It's a bit too sharp in here as well. So I'm just dragging the, the damp brush around those edges just to soften them off. like so. Now let's move on to the next bit. <clears throat> Coming slightly more uh, orange now. It's a bit more orangey yellow from the, the background colours. Dropping some of these in. Give 
give it a little spray. How's he doing? All right. Yeah, he's loving giving the spots. Oh, I heard him. I heard him. Just give a wallop. I heard him. I'll get some A little spray into that cloud. some of that down into there. Okay, now as we're coming down into the main body, just let that wash out a bit. A bit more water. Clean water. Just running that around the edges of some of those spots. And I'm going to go a bit more yellow again. Just work a bit more yellow into some of these patches. Just got a few bits of yellow in there. spots. So now as we're coming down into the main body of the steam, I'm just going to re-wet this. It's going to go slightly bluer again. You put more cerulean into that mix. Work quite a bit dirty. Cerulean and the cadmium red together. The vapors run all the way down here, which I don't want. Let's just block that off. I'll make it slightly less steep. Take my bluey colour and then start to run that into this area. Let that run down into the, the land. a few spots of that to link it with that sort of gushing area. So this is almost like the underside of a cloud. Just mop these bits up. Now if you notice, I haven't really done anything with that edge, but we're making it darker. That sort of shape has, has become less apparent. And it's kind of um, linked those shapes together a little bit. So I'll just carry on this steam over here. A bit more there, I think. <clears throat> Take that up into the cloud burst a bit more. A few darker patches here and there. A 
And needless to say that this is thicker paint than the paint that's already on the painting. So that it um, doesn't just cauliflower too much. Unfortunately, the paper's getting a little bit dry there now. Let's take that right out the top. A few spots in here. The odd bit there and there. Bit darker. I think I might even come slightly darker still, a bit more cerulean blue down here. Okay. And then just mop that up a bit. Just having a look at some of these edges just to see that they're not too strong. To soften some of them off. <laughs> I need a bit of, I need to let that all dry actually, and then I need to put a little bit of a wash just through that very, very light area. So let's dry that off. I'm going to tip that down a sec just so I can see what I've done. So I think first things first, I need to darken up a little bit more in the foreground and put some washes just through through the watery areas. So I'm going to re-wet this section just with some cleanish water, ideally clean water, but my water's got a bit wet, a bit dirty. <clears throat> just bringing some water over a slightly larger area than I want the actual paint to go, so that you're giving the paint room to creep. That's quite important. I'm wetting a bit of a bigger area than I need. And the same on this side. Just wet an area there. Again, slightly larger than what I actually need. <laughs> Just 
taking some of the yellow, a little bit of, tiny bit of the purple in it. So it's mainly yellow with a tiny touch of purple. <clears throat> Strengthen that up a bit more. So the colour's a bit stronger. And then I'm going to run a, a bead of this through this middle section. And also on this side as well. So I'll put some, uh, let's go with uh, some more of the cerulean and a bit of ultramarine in it, a bit of a bluey blue and a tiny bit of cadmium. Not quite that much. Give some darker patches. And also on this side. And then I'll continue that down. So just with some water over this existing wash. Soften that edge off. over there, bring a bit of that purpley colour up, Now in the foreground, right at the front, <clears throat> going to bring some quite strong, quite a bit stronger colour now. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to re-wet the area. Nice big brush all the way through. Because this is too light at the moment. If I want the sky to be nice and bright this has got to come darker so let's just re-wet that and into that i will put some of more of the black and i think the purple and the red together or the red at least so lots of the black and some red so the cadmium red light brings some of that back into these areas. Oh, that's a bit too dry there. 
So leaving a, a couple of the, um, you know, those light little spots here and there, but not too many. I'm just making sure no too strong an edge. Don't have any too strong edges. More red. Into that, I think I need some more purple with the black. It's come quite nice and dark now. Spray. Colors run together quite a bit. Build a bit more of a mound for the steam to come out of. <coughs> and let's lose some more blue into that colour, lose this shape here, it's too light. And a bit of this shape here as well. Tiny bit more to encourage the paint to run down a bit. Mop some of this up. Give it a bit more angle. Get those colours to work together a bit more. <clears throat> So I think just finally, once that's dried, just need to put, as I said, a little wash through that area. It's a little bit too light still. 
want those colours to mingle a bit more at the bottom. And here you have to kind of be a little bit patient and not dive in and try and play with this to get all of these little rivulets. Just need to let the paint do its own thing really. 